beautiful Japanese maples just don't happen. In this video, we'll show you how we grow our Japanese red maples to get a better quality maple. Hello, my name is Mike Curtis from Highlandville Farm. Today we have in front of us a Japanese wheat bean maple, and I'm going to tell you how to water and how to fertilize it. When we fertilize our plants, we usually fertilize them about once or twice a year. The first time is just to make sure that it's the right color, and the second time is for next year's growth. The reason that we are concerned about fertilizing for next year's growth is that a Japanese maple is considered to be a determinant plant. A determinant plant means that each and every year that when it grows out, there is a determinate amount of leaves and stem that can be formed. And that the determined amount of leaves and stem form is determined by last year's growing season. If the growing season from last year was a good growing season, the plant makes many new leaves and stem parts for the next year. And those new leaves and stem are stored in the bud. So when the bud forms, it's very important that it has enough water and enough fertilizer in the system of the plant to make lots of new parts for next year. When we fertilize for next year, we usually fertilize in about early August. That way that the fertilizer can get into the soil and get into the plant system. Because in about late August and into the fall time is when the buds start to form. And when we use fertilizer, we use a soil-release fertilizer called Osmocote. And we just do a broadcast fertilizer just on top of the plant on the surface. We don't ever put any fertilizer injections or any of the liquid type of and we just use the granulated form that slowly releases over time. Usually Osmoco comes in different colors for different years and we can see here we have some green and we have some white. The green stuff's from this year, the white stuff's from the other year. That way we know if we fertilize it or not. And when we fertilize, this is just an example of some Osmoco, we just put four in our hand and we just do a light broadcast just over the top. Kind of like that just Make sure that there's enough fertilizer on there for it to last most of the year. The Osmocote comes in different kinds. You, know, you have to read a label for how long each one lasts and for the strength. Uh, the other topic we're going to talk about is how to water these guys is one after you plant them. When you plant them, you should make sure that when you dig the hole out, just dig it a little bit wider than the pot itself, so that when you set the pot into the ground, there's a good gap between it, and you can fill in the dirt in between the pot, the plant, and the surrounding soil. Make sure that there's no air pockets in there. You don't want to compact the soil around. You just want to use your shovel to work the soil into the ground, getting rid of all the air pockets. After that, give it some water. That way it settles nicely. And after planting, make sure you go back and keep the ball moist. It's important to keep the ball moist, not overly wet because, or overly dry. Uh, once, if it's overly wet, there is no oxygen that gets into the soil, and then the root starts to rot and, and it dies. The whole plant dies. If it's too dry, the roots no longer grow, and the plant wilts, and roots don't have cuticles on them, so once they dry out, they're, they're thirsty. So just make sure that you have to keep it moist, and the plant should do fine. If you have any questions about the Japanese maple, just give us a call at 215. 
This video is brought to you by Highland Hill Farm. We grow and sell screening and buffering trees for privacy and sound barriers.